Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be looking at a viewer question that I received on LinkedIn, and it is all about the usage of controlled impedance when you are doing a controlled dielectric or controlled stack up design. Now, controlled impedance is normally used when you want your fabrication house to design a custom stack up for you. But what about the case where you use a standard stack up and the fabrication house gives you the option for controlled impedance. What's up with that? Well, that's the essence of this viewer question and we're gonna jump into it right now. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started with this video, let's take a look at that viewer question. Marco Duxi writes, would you revise this already aged video with a third approach? For an entry level price to produce a prototype board, JLC PCV, for instance, requires that you choose one of their standard stack ups, which they provide some data for, but at the same time, want you to specify whether you want controlled impedance. What's up with that? If I know the stack up data that I have to use, I can calculate the trace widths and clearances for whatever I need. It would have been nice if I could at least get the test coupon Bonds so I can measure the final impedances, but I suspect that they would not send them to hobbyists. In this case, what is their role in controlling impedance, if any? So first things first, that previous video is the controlled impedance versus controlled dielectric design video that you can see here on screen. Now controlled impedance design refers to the fabricator using impedance testing data that they have on hand to determine the appropriate layers and dielectrics that you should use in your PCB stack up to hit a target trace width for a desired impedance. Controlled dielectric design is basically where you as the designer take over responsibility for selecting materials and layer things thicknesses, and then you design the trace width that you need to hit your desired impedance. Now you as the designer can choose either approach, but there is one rub here and Marco brings it up in this question. And that is what is the use of controlled impedance when you have a standard stack up? Now there is an advantage to using the standard stack up approach. One of those advantages is cost. They tend to cost less. And then the other is material availability. The fabrication house generally stocks those materials in enough inventory in order to manufacture at moderate to high volume as needed. I guess there is a third advantage because frankly, not all designers know how or need to design their own stack ups and they don't really need to pour through data sheets in order to do it. Pretty much any PCB material will work just fine. So in that case, might as well go with the standard stack up. Now with that in mind, what is the role of controlling impedance? Well, let's take a look at some manufacturer websites and we'll look at what the role of controlled impedance is by then looking at some impedance calculations in Altium Designer. Now for the disclaimer, by showing any PCB manufacturer's website in this video, it does not constitute an official endorsement by Altium or myself. Do your own research and make sure that standard stackups on any PCB manufacturer's website are gonna work for your board. What I wanna do now is show some data from PCB manufacturer websites so we we can see what data is provided with a standard stack up and then how that relates to controlled impedance. Here I'm on Sunstone Circuits website on their standard multi-layer construction tables page. This page details all of their standard stack ups for different thicknesses. Now, if I just click on one of these entries in this table, for example, this six layer board is gonna come up and you can see here, this is a 62 mil thick board. And you can see here that all of the dielectric constant information is supplied for each of these layers. You also have layer thicknesses specified here in this table. Now I can take this data that you see on screen, put it into Altium Designer or a PCB Stackup Planner application or some online calculator, and I can start designing transmission lines to 50 ohms or any other impedance using the dielectric constant and layer thicknesses in this table. Then when I go to place an order with Sunstone Circuits, I can tell them I'm using your standard six layer stack up and I can specify the board thickness. And then if I select controlled impedance on my order form, they're going to run a test with that stack up to ensure that the trace width that I put into my design actually hits to a 50 ohm impedance within some tolerance. 
They will then provide that measurement data back to you as the designer, and you can determine whether or not you want to move forward. Now, a lot of times these companies will already have a database full of data on their standard stack ups, and they can provide it to you before you actually start building boards. So controlled impedance in this case is really about verification that the trace widths you put into the design match the data that they have for their standard stack ups. Let's take a look at another manufacturer. Here I have Circuit Hub's website brought up and I'm on their standard multi-layer PCB stack ups page. Now this page is really useful because they do offer some data sheets here for various materials. And if you scroll down, you'll see sections for their custom stack ups. Now, as I scroll through here, you can see that we have all of the same information on this page that we saw for Sunstone Circuits. They're providing the layer thicknesses and the dielectric constants. Now, if I use this data and then I design a high-speed PCB or an RF PCB that requires specific impedance for specific traces, and I select controlled impedance from my order form when I order from Circuit Hub, they're going to perform testing with my stack up once they actually build the boards. So in this case, controlled impedance is being used again for verification that the design you created actually fits the specifications that they supplied to you. So they're gonna check an impedance measurement, they're gonna make sure that the trace width that you specified in your design hits that impedance value, and then they'll tell you whether or not you have significant deviation. Let's take a look at one more manufacturer because this was brought up in Marco's question. Here I'm on jlcpcb.com, and of course I know a lot of designers out there order from JLC. Here on this page, we're looking at their dielectric constant data for their various prepregs that they use in their standard stack ups. And if you scroll down on this page, you can see here that they have standard stack ups listed on this page. Now again, I can take all this data, put it into Altium Designer or another design application or an online calculator, and I can use this information to calculate the trace width that I need to hit a target impedance. Now, JLC PCB takes it one step further, and they actually give you an impedance calculator. Now, I didn't know this about JLC PCB. I've never been on this page before filming this video, but they do offer an impedance calculator here for their various standard stack ups. And so, for example, if I just hit this calculate button, you'll see here that it's gonna do some plug and chug, and then it comes out with a trace width for this particular stack up. I can also do some switches to different stack ups and you can see here that it's going to give me these other trace width values that you can see here in this table. Now, if I order a board through JLC and I select the controlled impedance option, they're gonna do the exact same thing. They're going to test that the transmission line width that I put into my design actually gives me the target impedance that I want. And they're gonna give me that data and they'll be able to tell me whether or not there's significant deviation. Now, one thing I'd like to point out here with JLC is that they're doing something a little bit different from what you would see on other PCB manufacturers' websites and on their order form. So to see exactly what's different, let's take a look at the JLC order form. Here, I'm just gonna click on instant quote, and you can see here the very familiar JLC PCB order form. Now, I'm gonna bring up a four layer design just for fun, and then I'm gonna select impedance control here. So I click yes. And this is where all of the standard stack ups for JLC pop up. So you're only selecting the standard stack up when you select impedance control. And I think the reason they do this is because they already have that data available and it lets them expedite determining whether or not your design actually meets the impedance target that you specify. Sometimes when you upload your Gerber files, you can create, for example, a transmission line table or an impedance table directly in one of the Gerber layers. Now, when you upload all of those files to JLC PCB, somebody's gonna review it and they're gonna be able to see right there in your Gerber layers what the trace width needs to be for a target impedance. This is gonna allow JLC to check that in the design and check that against the stack up you select before they produce the board. So I think JLC does this specifically to expedite the review of your board and to ensure that what you wanna order is actually accurate. Now, if you do choose to use a standard stack up, what's the right way to specify impedances on different layers? How should you do this? And can you use multiple impedance profiles on a single layer? Well, let's jump into Altium Designer and we'll see how that all works. So just briefly, let's look at specifying impedance with some of these stack ups in Altium Designer. Of course, I've created a blank PCB here and I've put in one of the JLC PCB stack ups here 
into the layer stack manager. And to add in the impedance calculation, of course, it's very simple. Just click the impedance tab, and then you have the add impedance profile button here. Click that, and then you can start doing your impedance calculations. Now you can see right here that the width that Altium Designer calculates for a 50 ohm microstrip on one of the standard JLC PCB stackups is 6.692 mils. Now, let's just take a look at the same calculation on the same stack up in JLC PCB with their impedance calculator. Using their impedance calculator, they come out to 6.16 mils. Now, that's not an insignificant difference. However, if I were to put in 6.16 mils right here, you can see that Altium Designer predicts the impedance is now 52 ohms instead of 50 ohms. So it's about a 5% difference. I think this illustrates why you would need controlled impedance testing even if you're using a standard stack up. When you put in a value for the width from an impedance calculator, of course, it's just a very good estimate. And it tries to be as accurate of an estimate as possible, but what really matters at the end of the day is the measurement of the impedance. And that's what controlled impedance testing is trying to do. Remember, standard stack ups are just half the story. They give you the dielectric constant and thickness data that you can use in your design tool to calculate an impedance, but all these impedance calculators are a little different. The one that's shown here in Altium Designer is based on Symbior's Field Solver software, whereas the one shown here in JLC PCB, we have no idea what it's based on. It's a totally black box. It could be based on some equation. It could be based on data that they've compiled from years of manufacturing this exact stack up. We have no idea. It's up to you as a designer to make a judgment call here. In this case, I would recommend using either trace width. The reason is that they're close enough together and the impedance deviation between them is so small that you're probably gonna be just fine for most designs. Now, what about a differential pair? Well, let's take a look here on JLC. They do offer an option for a differential pair. We're gonna set this to a 100 ohm impedance and then we'll click the calculate button. And you can see here with an eight mil trace spacing, it comes back with a trace width of 4.88 mils. Now let's compare that with Altium Designer. If I add in a differential impedance profile, I set this to 100 ohms and I set my trace gap to eight mils, you can see they come back with a 5.486 mil trace width. Again, if I put in that 4.88 mil trace width into Altium Designer, you can see here that we have a 5% deviation. So 105.25 ohms versus a 100 ohm target impedance. Once again, we have the calculators giving two different answers and at the end of the day, the result that really matters is the result that you measure on the board that gets built. That's where controlled impedance testing comes in and that is gonna be the responsibility of your fabricator. Now, of course, we could have both of these impedance profiles on the same layer, and that's exactly what I've set up here inside the Layer Stack Manager. And in reality, you could put any number of impedance profiles on any number of your layers, as long as you are able to reliably calculate the impedance, or your manufacturer can verify that those impedances will be correct based on their measurement data. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. We always love getting your questions. And if you ask me a good question, it might end up in one of these videos. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.